Hello, 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 and hello. I hope you are well. I am in Malaysia. Yes, I am still in Malaysia. And today I am on a cultural tour in Kuala Lumpur. And it starts here at Batu Caves, bright and early in the morning. The hand on your screen belongs to my amazing tour guide. I am on a private tour. If you are watching my content for the very first time, welcome. My name is Cookie. I am a South African world traveler. Yes, I am from the great nation of South Africa. There are 272 steps leading up to the caves. I am not the fittest person out there. I have been walking quite a bit though since I've been on this tour of Southeast Asia. The steps, they look colorful and inviting but still intimidating. And I love a challenge. I am one of those people, if I start something, I will see it to the end if the environment is conducive and this environment is conducive i am traveling the world visiting beautiful places interacting with the most amazing people what is there not to love i love my life I had to sit down and catch my breath. These steps are no joke, like seriously. Batu Caves is a series of limestone caves and it hosts a number of Hindu temples.
A visit to Batu Caves is a must when you are in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. 
What is there not to love about the Batu Caves? The steps are so beautiful, so colorful. A lot of work to climb though. And of course, caves are natural wonders. On our way to the National Mosque of Malaysia, we stopped at the shop where they design the fabrics and they also sell clothes. We stopped so I could buy a scarf and I loved this stop. It was so worthwhile. I love supporting local businesses as I travel. This is so therapeutic. I could do this every day with ease. Next is a demonstration of the many different ways to wear a scarf and a sarong. amazed by the similarities in terms of patterns. They are so similar to patterns that you'd find in South Africa and other African countries. The outfit I am wearing today, my tour guide thought I bought it here in Malaysia and I bought it in South Africa. I bought it from Rich Factory. She's on Instagram and she sells amazing African print clothes. I mean, look at these pants. I had to buy them and I cannot wait to wear them. The other day when I was in the Philippines, yes, I think it was the Philippines, I went into a department store. They had clothes that had a print similar to the print of the vendor people of South Africa, their traditional wear, very similar to the vendor traditional wear. I could not believe my eyes. I was like, what? It just shows you we really are a global community. We really are intertwined. 
with a lot of similarities than differences. That is why we need to live in harmony. I also decided to buy a dress. You cannot go wrong with a dress like this in, you know, in a hot and humid climate. So I went with the blue one. The reddish one reminded me of a top that I bought in Zanzibar, in Tanzania, when I was on holiday. We are now at the National Mosque of Malaysia. It is so beautiful, so holy, so peaceful, the serenity of it all. And I love the design of a half-open umbrella. Just brilliant. When you arrive at the mosque as a visitor, as a tourist, they loan you a gown. So my tour guide thought it's best that we stop and buy a scarf to cover my head so I don't have to put on the hoodie. So that's exactly what we did.
this is one of the tallest buildings in the world. It is in the top three currently. A visit to the National Mosque of Malaysia is a must when you are in Kuala Lumpur. It is beautiful and also holy. There is something about being in a holy place that words cannot even begin to describe. So if you're planning a trip to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, please put the National Mosque of Malaysia on your list of places to visit. I first saw this temple on Instagram and the pictures I saw were amazing. So beautiful, I had to come and see it for myself. My tour guide was saying to me on our way here that if you are single and you visit the temple, afterwards you will get married. And if you're married, your marriage will be blessed and you will have a happy union. He was also saying couples come here all the time to take their wedding pictures. So let's head inside and see the beautiful temple.
temple exceeded my expectations. It is one of those places you must visit when you are in Kuala Lumpur. We are now going to the last stop, which is Chinatown. At this point, my intuition is telling me to cancel Chinatown. And it is quite persistent. It's saying to me, it is very hot, you are hot, you are now hungry, it is lunchtime and you are starving, rather go back to the apartment. But for some reason, I am choosing to override that feeling that's telling me to cancel Chinatown. And so we are going to Chinatown. My tour guide is also the driver, so it's just the two of us, and he has just dropped me on the side of the road. He cannot park his car here, so he will drive around and come back and pick me up in 15 minutes. Even as we made this stop, my intuition said, no, do not go to Chinatown. But here I am, about to cross the road to go to Chinatown.
1973, the year I was born. It is just as old as I am. I love it. My time is almost up. I am starving. I can't take it anymore. It is very hot. The sunscreen on my face is melting. I'm walking back to find the tour guide. Little did I realize that as I am walking, I have been spotted and I am being followed by pickpocketers. I am carrying my bag, which is a backpack type of a bag. So I am carrying it on my back. When I turned into the street, which I used to get into Chinatown, I found myself boxed in by people. When I am walking in Chinatown, the last visuals, there's a guy who's walk, walking behind me with a mask on. There's a reason why he had a mask on. He's a thief and he's working with other thieves. So anyway, so the moment I stopped recording, that's when they passed. I turned a corner, and as I turned the corner, there were other people on that street. It's like the main street, for lack of a better word, um, I don't know, the one that you use when you're coming from the road and you enter Chinatown. So as I'm making the, the a right turn, to get back um, to my driver who was wait, waiting for me in the street. Um, so I turn a corner and then I feel pressure right on this arm where I'm carrying the bag. The moment I feel pressure, I turn around literally right here on my face is a guy and he's got his cold bag, like empty school bag in front of him, like, you know, right next to my bag. So I do this and my bag is open like this. I kid you not. And thank God I put my wallet right at the bottom of my bag, like right at the bottom. And I pull and then I put a stuff that is, you know, that doesn't have that much value on top. And then I put this little bag on top. And uh, because in this bag, literally it's like hand lotion, um, hand lotion, um, lipsticks, and that's about it. So the guy opened my, by this moment, he had reached into my bag and I felt the pressure when he lifted this bag, right? And I turned and I'm like, what? And people just stopped. Nobody screamed, nobody did it. Everybody just stopped. And the guy is like literally right here behind me. And people can see like what happened, you know? And um, I just followed him. Yes, I did. I followed him and uh, I followed him. I think I took what? A few steps and he threw this big bag on the floor, like on the ground. He threw it on the ground. I picked it up. People were so shocked. They were standing there like, he had to throw it on the floor because there was nowhere to run, right? It's Chinatown. There are people all over. And, um, you know, he had to give it back. incident I could not do much you know there's something about being you know 
victimized being a victim of a crime that just makes you feel so drained like so drained it's just something it messes with your spirit so all i did was i stayed in my room <laughs> this is my room and uh do you like the wallpaper you know behind the headboard i love it all i did i stayed in this room and ate and just ordered food and uh watched uh, youtube and uh, by the second day, I was still doing the same thing and late in the afternoon. And I said, you know what? The devil cannot win. He will be defeated every time. And um, life goes on. And um, you know what? I booked my next tour and kept it moving. You know what? I keep it moving. I am still enjoying uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It's a great city and um, I'm loving it you know i'm loving it and um so what are the lessons for all of us number one always uh obey your intuition your intuition is the voice of god and uh, even though i disobeyed my intuition god still protected me number two cover yourself with prayer cover yourself with prayer every day i pray and i ask for protection right and um especially because i am you know traveling i'm a world traveler so i ask for protection i ask for mercies for grace for favor with god and with people and um you know and um that's what god has shown me you know his loving kindness grace i see mercies every day um and he protects me and number three Please be vigilant um, when you are moving um, and doing your own thing, moving around, doing your own things, because um, you know what? We live in a wicked world, and unfortunately, some people, um, you know, are just standing on the sidelines watching us and, um, you know, sporting our weaknesses, and they can smell a tourist from you know miles away and then they just target you and they pounce on you which is what happened to me so and uh, don't carry anything on your back where you do not have eyes <laughs> you know no backpacks on your back you carry it in front of you um ladies you have a purse uh, with a long string you cross the string make sure the purse is right in front of you never put anything in your pockets you know um in your back pockets never ever 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 so put everything right here in front where you've got eyes and you can see and uh, just be vigilant and um even when you're in tourist at uh, tourist attractions be vigilant um like my driver said when i made it to the car that um the police had rounded up a group of guys who were pickpocketing at Batu Caves. I arrested the group. It was a group of about 20 men. So just be vigilant. But like I say, the devil doesn't stop anything. We pray, we listen to our intuition, we take precautions and we keep it moving. Take care, be safe and God bless. And don't forget to pray.